Hi there, this is Chris of Moto Legends, the chap in the cap, here today to talk to you about the fourth iteration of a special collaboration we have with Northampton-based bootmaker Trickers. Now, Trickers is one of the most respected, most revered names in bootmaking. They have been making boots in the Northampton area since 1829. The the company was set up by Joseph Tricker, although technically he wasn't a Tricker back then, he was a Joseph Barthrop, but his aim was to create the finest boots for country gentlemen and the landed gentry. And back in the 19th century, many a 21-year-old would have woken up on his birthday to a pair of Tricker's boots that were intended to last him until his dying day. The company still makes boots the old-fashioned way, made on benches, they have a bespoke business, but they make them in the same factory they've been in since 1905. Amongst shoe people, boot people, they are revered as the finest maker of gentlemen's boots. They make for kings, or historically they're made for kings and princes, presidents and prime ministers. They have a royal warrant from Prince Charles. They really do make the finest gentlemen's boots and therefore it's a great honour that they would be so kind as to work with us on our motorcycle boot. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about how they make their boots then I'm going to go on and talk about the specific boot that we are doing this year because it's a wee bit different to the boots that we've done with them in previous years. So before I go on and talk about the boots that we are making I just wanted to talk a little bit about how these boots are constructed and there's one particular feature that is a, um, an example of how the highest end boots are made that you don't find on many boots these days. And it's a Goodyear welt. Now, what a Goodyear welt is, um, when you make the boots, you make the upper of, of the boots. So this, this leather piece that you can see here, um, it's obviously hand handmade. Um, the bits are cut out by that by hand, it's all stitched together. You then have an insole that is stitched to that upper. On a welted boot, they then sew another leather strip all around the outside of the boot. That leather strip is then sewn to the midsole, which is this piece here. In this case, there's a lower rubber sole, an outer sole in, in this, this case, but the midsole is sewn via the welt to the inner sole, to the insole. Now, the benefit of that is what happens, there's, a, there's a, a gap there. And what a company like Trickers does is they fill that with cork. That makes the boots particularly comfortable because it's a bit like memory foam. When you put your foot into a, um, a Goodyear welted boot or a boot like, like this, over time that cork will mold to the shape of your foot. The other thing that they can do in that gap between the insole and the midsole they put a wooden shank for rigidity. So a Tricker's boot is as difficult to twist and turn. It's got as much torsional rigidity as pretty much any motorcycle boot. It's got to be said that a Goodyear welted boot is going to be a little bit stiffer than a boot where you've just got a, um, um, what's, what's called a Blake stitch or a traditional stitching together of the midsole to the insole. They take a little bit longer to wear in, but they give greater longevity um, they are technically more waterproof and because you can have that layer of cork in, the, in between the insole and the midsole, they tend to be supremely comfortable. So that's a feature of the very best boots in the world. All of the boots that we have made it with Trickers have indeed a Goodyear wilted sole. So let's go on and talk about the boots that we are making with them this year for Christmas 2019. So traditionally for the last four years, the kind of boot that we have done with Trickers, we've collaborated with Trickers on, is this, it's a traditional Seven Islet Derby, very recognizable profile, like lots of short motorcycle boots, fantastic boot, really strong, lovely leather, and so on. But for this year, we thought we would do something a little bit different. This boot is a bit of a hybrid, I suppose. It's a combination of a Chelsea boot, a traditional Chelsea boot with its elasticated sides, and a more traditional gentleman's boot. The reason we've done it is customers have told us that they just cannot be bothered with the hassle of doing the laces up on a boot. Um, they like the look maybe of a laced up boot, but it's just a too much time. So the idea of this boot is with its elasticated side panels, it's gonna make it far easier to get in and out of. I would venture to suggest that you cannot 
certainly initially you will not be able to get in and out of these boots without using the laces but what it will mean is that you have to undo the laces less far than you would need to on a traditional uh, laced boot. One point I would make, we're shooting this a few days before our stock arrives with us. Um, this boot was a sample, an early sample. It's got seven eyelets. Our boot will have three speed laces at the top. So traditional eyelets in the bottom four and then speed laces at the top. It should make it even easier to, to get in and out of. In terms of the boot and its, its various features, one of the first things that is clear that differentiates it from boots we've done in the past is the Scotch grain leather. Now, Scotch grain leather was developed for Scottish gentlemen farmers many years ago. It's a particularly tough and rugged leather. It was also developed because it was particularly resilient, maintenance free and waterproof. Scotch grain leather normally starts a little bit thicker than most leathers because you stamp the, the, the grain into it, so it has to start off a wee bit thicker. It makes for a particularly strong boot. In terms of our boot, we have a hardened toe protector. That's a really tough toe. We have this gear change protector that we have developed with a Trickers. We particularly like it. It creates a look that makes it appear as though this is just part of the design. It doesn't look like a gear change pad. So when you're off the bike, it doesn't look particularly bikey. Um, so th that works really well. We've got a counter in the heel as well. In the sole, as I've mentioned, not only have you got the cork for comfort, but you've got a wooden shank. It makes this boot incredibly tough and strong. I mean, this is, you know, this is as tough as, as any boot you will ever find. Technically, what I have to say, however, is it is not a CE approved motorcycle boot. In fact, technically, I'm not sure that we're allowed to call it a motorcycle boot. So I think the way I would term this is it's a gentleman's boot that you can ride on a motorcycle. In our view, it's perfectly up to the job, but it's not not properly a motorcycle boot because it hasn't gone through the CE tests for approval. This, by contrast, is a full CE approved boot. Now, you can screw this up, you can twist it, you can do whatever you want with it. If you want to take the view that you're safer in a pair of boots like that than a pair of boots like this, that's up to you. But I have to tell you that I would feel much more comfortable in an accident situation wearing this boot than I would one of those. One of the areas, of course, in which it is compromised a little are the elasticated pads here. Great for getting in and out of, but there's no ankle protectors here. So that's a trade-off you're going to have to decide um, whether it's acceptable for you. It's a strong boot, but it's not going to be the most protective here. In terms of water ingress, this also creates another issue. Now, the leather, Scotch grain leather, is about as impermeable to water ingress as any leather you can ever find. It's a fantastic leather in that, in that respect. The boot doesn't have a waterproof membrane, not really an issue for us because in some ways we are moving to a position where we quite like boots without a waterproof membrane, where the leather has been treated for waterproofing. It means that you have a certain amount of waterproofing for when it does rain, but when it's hotter, those boots breathe better. But clearly here, even though the leather is very waterproof, there's gonna be some water ingress here. That's just something you're going to have to decide whether that is acceptable to you. The other thing is the sole. One point I, I would make, um, you can see here, uh, I'm going to get Graham to do a close-up later, you can see the hand-stitched or the, the stitched sole here. That's another feature of a welted boot. You will see some boot manufacturers will have created a look that looks like this, but actually it's plastic it looks like it's stitched, but a good deal welt because the midsole is stitched to the um, insole. It means that this is very easy to take off to then put on a new midsole and a new outsole. In terms of the outsole, we've gone for two versions of, um, or two different sorts of sole for this boot. For the brown one, which we think is a little bit more country, we've gone for a particularly tough commando sole. On the black version, which is the kind of boot that you might wear more in an urban situation, you might wear it into work, you could even wear this with a suit, we've gone for a slightly smoother, less profiled day-night sole. Both as strong as, as one another, but that's obviously a bit more suited to country wear. So I think that's about everything that I need to tell you about these boots. They are um, amazing bits of kit. Um, you won't find a stronger boot of this ilk. Um, we're massive fans of Daytona boots. 
they are the best motorcycle boots on the market, but if you're looking for this style of boot, a gentleman's boot, then this is as good as anything you'll ever find. The other thing that I should point out is there is a degree of exclusivity with these. Don't know how Trick has managed to do this, but they allow us to make tiny quantities of boots. We produce just 24 pairs of each color each year. And actually in some sizes, we have only one or two pairs made for us. So if you want a boot that you're not gonna see someone else at the traffic lights wearing next to you, then you need to look at these, at these trickers. Um, anyway, they are in for Christmas 2019. Um, we think they are just wonderful boots. So if you'd like to know more information about them, visit the website www.motolegends.com. If you would like to sign up to our email bulletins, then on the front page of the website, at the very top, there's a newsletter sign up button. Um, do that and you'll receive all of our future bulletins about products like this, new products coming into the market um, or into the warehouse every week and we will inform you about, about those. If you would like to buy a pair of these boots, then there's a button top right of the screen that will take you direct to the relevant page that you can buy these boots um, straight away. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, we would be delighted to have you come on board as a subscriber and you can do that on the button down below. Lastly, I should mention that here in Guildford, which is where we're based, we have a fantastic shop. These boots are in stock. You can always order online. You could order a couple of pairs if you're not sure of, of, of your size. But when you're buying boots of this quality, my view is you are best to come and try them. So if you are able to find the opportunity to come and see us in Guildford, it's the best way. The fit is pretty standard. I would say it's a slightly wider fit. It's what Trick has called a five fit. Um, so it's pretty generous in the forefoot. But if you want to make sure that you get it fit right first time, then you could always come and see us here in Guildford. Um, so anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little review of our latest collaboration with Trickers of Northampton. Very excited as always. Hope to see you soon. This has been Chris, Moto Legends.